Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams is my guest this week. We're going to talk about the archery season in North Dakota. Jeb, while the firearm season for deer is somewhat of a state holiday, the archery opener is a little bit more subdued, yet uh, these bull people are, are very passionate about their sport. Yeah, no doubt. Their archery hunting in North Dakota over the last number of years has been has been growing, and 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 even before that, though, archers have always been a, a very passionate group of individuals that really enjoy spending that extra time outside and uh, just a, obviously a different hunting style and a little bit more up up close and personal uh, versus the deer gun season. Well, let's start off, Jeb. Talk about the deer numbers. Deer numbers appear to be going in the right direction, Tom. You know, from our mule deer surveys that uh, that are done in the the spring and the fall, are there's been a positive direction with mule deer over the last four years now, and that's that's a good thing. We are definitely at a at low in the with the mule deer cycle, and that appears to be working its way upward. So that's a good thing. Uh, Whitetail numbers also, anecdotally, hearing from around the state that numbers are are looking quite a bit better, and uh, also hearing from our staff doing some other uh, upland game surveys that reproduction appears to be pretty good in, in most areas. So I think we're working our way out of a, out of a 30 year low in license numbers and so that's a good thing. I know every year we have, uh, I guess we would call them trouble spots, but it deals with uh, sometimes diseases like EHD. Have you heard anything about that this year? Yeah, it certainly can. EHD definitely can have a localized impact in the southwest part of the state. And fortunately, knock on wood, uh, we don't have a we don't have any episodes of EHD. We've been in touch with South Dakota folks a little bit, and and there's been a few reports uh, in South Dakota, but so far we have not received any EHD reports, uh, or we have not tested and confirmed any EHD reports in North Dakota. So overall, I guess archers could expect to see more deer than they have in recent years. I, I think so. I think that would be fair to say. Okay, Jeb, there's some special regulations for archers that they need to be aware of about baiting. Yeah, baiting on, uh, of course, on any wildlife management areas across the state uh, and other public land areas, they, they need to be aware that there is no, no baiting on, on, on those areas. And so uh, it's just important for people to have, uh, have that information and knowledge and be sure of whatever public land that you're going on, you're, you're aware of any rules and regulations, but baiting is a particular one. And, and then that, that's, a, that, that's, of course, across the board for us in five, five areas in North Dakota, five hunting units west of the Missouri River, 3C, 3E1, 3E2, 3F1, and 3F2, where there's a complete baiting restriction in that area. Why? Uh, that, was, that was because of disease concerns, disease risk with uh, chronic wasting disease. And so that was put into place when chronic wasting disease was first discovered in that area uh, approximately 10 years ago. You talked about public lands, Jeb, and it's not just our WMAs, but uh, other public land as well. Uh, there are regulations and rules concerning tree stands uh, and things like that, dates that people need to remember. Yeah, there are, yeah. And f so for our, our wildlife management areas, there, there are a few things that people need to keep in mind as far as the, uh, the use of portable tree stands and portable ground blinds. Uh, people are obviously welcome to use those. They need to be identified uh, with some type of a tag, uh, some type of an identification that an enforcement officer can, can recognize that has the individual's name, address, contact information on there. Uh, and then those need to be removed by the 31st of January. And so after that, they're considered abandoned property and then they can be confiscated. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, on our public areas, people are, they need to have that equipment for, the, for, for participating in hunting and that's, that's understandable, but there are some rules that go along with it that we ask people to comply with. As long as we're talking about the archery season, Jeb, let's talk a little bit about the pronghorn season. That's gonna be opening Seems yeah, it, it, it does. And this year, again, with uh, seven units open, there's more opportunities. And, uh, you know, with the pronghorn season just opening, reopening back in 2014 with one unit, um, we, we obviously had to start at a, at a much more conservative pace. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't offer over-the-counter archery licenses. Anybody that wanted to participate in the archery season for pronghorn had to apply for a license like, like anybody did. And so individuals that were successful or are successful in the lottery can then participate in the archery portion of the season. And then if they're not successful with that, they can use that uh, during, the, during the gun portion of the uh, pronghorn season as well. As these sportsmen and women take to the field this archery season or any hunting season 
uh, for that matter, Jeb, and there's another thing that they need to be aware of, and that's fire. It is. And anytime people are recreating in, in western, especially western North Dakota in, uh, in September, uh, more years than not, there's going to be dry conditions. And so we, we really encourage people to follow the state fire index, which is put in place for people to monitor the daily index, the daily conditions taking place on the landscape. And, and those conditions do change every day. And so it's something that people need to be aware of. And there are certain restrictions and regulations based on the based based on the daily fire index. And so people need to be aware of those conditions when they're out there because that does potentially have some restrictions on the uses that you can be, uh, that you can be doing when you're recreating in the western part of the state or anywhere in the state. All right, Jeb, thanks. Thank you, Tom. There are a number of hunting seasons opening in the next month and a half or so. Dove season opens on Thursday, September 1st, and the archery, deer and pronghorn, and the mountain lion seasons all open on Friday, September 2nd. The season for grouse and partridge opens on Saturday, September 10th, and the annual youth deer season opens September 16th. Youth waterfowl season is set for September 17th, and the early waterfowl season for residents only opens Saturday, September 24th, while the regular waterfowl season and the youth pheasant season open Saturday, October 1st. Pronghorn firearm season is set to begin on Friday, September 30th, and the pheasant season in North Dakota opens on Saturday, October 8th. For Jeb Williams and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. See you again next week.